this smells wonderful. I can't wait to go home and make pesto pasta with this. Oh, Mr. Tim, are you going to invite me to your house for dinner? Um, not so soon, Mr. Long. Oh, no. Not so soon. Uh, I, I hope that this uh, basil is fresh. Uh. Uh, I heard that if it's not too fresh, it might contain some pesticides. Is it true? Uh, it probably does because I bought it from FairPrice. Oh no. Yeah, it's cheap. Do you know that pesticides actually contain halogenal arenes? You're going to inhale it, you know? Really? Hey, hello. Uh, it's carcinogenic. Oh my god. doing that. Uh, okay. Now, Mr. Long, can you shed some light? What exactly is halogenal arene? So, once again, like the name suggests, mm -hmm. uh, halogen uh, bonded to an arene, which typically we talk about it as a benzene ring, right? So, uh, once again, the halogen must be directly attached to the benzene. There should not be any additional carbon in between them because that will not be known as a halogenal arene. Ah, okay. So, we're going to take a look at the reactivity of my halogenal arenes. Uh, Mr. Tim, would you like to bring us through it? Yeah. So, guys, to explain the reactivity of halogenal arenes to you, I need to first explain the reactivity of halogenal alkanes, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is something that we saw, all right? Now, in halogenal alkanes, we saw that the R, or the carbon, attached to the halogen is electrophilic, right? So your nuclear file can attack that R group or that carbon and break that CX bond, okay? Now, Mr. Long, do you think I can say the same thing? about the carbon attached directly to the halogen. Can I say that it's electrophilic? Uh, that's a good question. So you notice that this carbon that you've highlighted is part of a benzene ring. Okay. And we understood from benzene that a phenomenon known as resonance has occurred. Uh, that is where you start to see six delocalized pi electrons. And that's going to make our benzene ring a, lo a lot more electron rich, right? And uh, I think because of that, I'm going to call it a nucleophile instead. Right, so the carbon attached to the Cl is not that electrophilic as you think. So it's actually a nuclear file. And if a nuclear file tries to approach another nuclear file, you're going to get electrostatic repulsion. So unlike the nucleophilic sub reaction you have seen in Rx, you're not going to see the same nucleophilic sub in halogenal arenes. Okay? Now, Mr. Leung, there's another reason that mm -hmm. why halogenal arenes do not react. That's right. So now, if I take a look at the halogenal arene, I first need you to understand that a chlorine that is from group 17 mm -hmm. is going to have quite a bit of lone pairs going on over there. Right? Okay. Can you remind me how many lone pairs does the Cl have over here? Well, it has three lone pairs. Right. Yep. So one of them is going to reside in a p orbital. Okay. And more importantly, this p orbital is going to be parallel and adjacent to that of the benzene. Right. So let me just write that down here for you. Now, because these p orbitals are parallel and adjacent to the electron cloud from the benzene, uh, Mr. Tim, can you tell me what's going to happen? Well, if the p orbitals are sideways and they're parallel, they're going to mm -hmm. overlap. Right. right. And the moment they overlap, what happens to the electrons? The electrons get delocalized into the benzene ring, and That's it right. gives rise to some form of a partial double bond. Okay, right. so uh, you're going to see that now um, this bond over here is going to get strengthened mm -hmm. uh, because of the fact that you, you're going to achieve this thing called a partial double bond character. Right. right? Now, because this bond is strengthened, uh, the breakage of this bond will prove to be a bit more difficult. Uh, and as a result, if you want to try to substitute this chlorine away, it is not going to be so easy. And this is the second reason why, at the end of the day, halogenal arenes do not undergo nucleophilic up. Exactly. Now, so for halogenal arenes, so because the benzene in the halogenal arene is nucleophilic, it has to react with electrophiles, so it cannot undergo a nucleophilic sub. It reacts via an electrophilic sub reaction, and we've seen this in arenes, right? So now, we have four reactions here, 6.1 to 6.4. I'm just going to remind you of a few reactions here. Before we begin, remind yourself that the X here, it is saturated, so Mr. Long, 2,4 or 3-directing? I think it's 2,4-directing. It is 2,4. Mm -hmm. So if you look at all the reactions here, you can look at how they are 2-4 directing, mm -hmm. right? Now, not only that, the X is a halogen, so it's very electronegative. It sucks electrons away from the benzene ring. It deactivates the benzene ring, and now the benzene ring is less nucleophilic. Now, remind me again, Mr. Leong. So if it's less nucleophilic, are my conditions now harsher? Or less harsh. So we say that uh, the benzene becomes deactivated. So definitely, in order for the reaction to happen, the conditions you need must be harsher. Yes. So we have all these, you know, harsher conditions. Now we have heating. We have above fifty-five degrees. Likewise. Okay. That's it. Now, Mr. Long, run us through six point one, please. So I'll just use one of the four reactions to help me to uh, uh, to summarize everything for you. So uh, in the event for electrophilic sub, uh, remember that the reaction only occurs on the benzene. The H is going to get replaced. Uh, the Cl still remains intact because they do not undergo nucleophilic sub. Now, the reason why is it electrophilic is because your benzene is a nucleophile. Uh, but in general, we actually need to employ the help of a FEX3, mm -hmm. which we call a Lewis acid. 
to help me to do something. Mr. Tim, can you remind me again what is it, what's the purpose? Oh no, um, Lewis Acid, the LA stands for loan pair acceptor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's going to accept a loan pair from the halogen. It breaks that XX bond yes. and release that X plus. Yes. So what is more important at the end of the day is to generate a stronger electrophile okay. so that we can attack the weak nucleophile and that is my benzene. Right. 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 So that's the purpose of the Lewis Acid over here. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, so uh, I think nothing much that I want to talk about. So for 6.2 to 6.4, uh, you can read it on your own. Once again, the reactions are exactly the same as that of benzene, right? Now, the last part over here that we're going to end off with is to tell me a distinguishing test between uh, your halogenyl alkanes as well as your uh, aryl halides or your chloro benzenes. Now, in this case, right, I'm going to give you four solutions. Uh, one of which is going to be a chloro benzene. Uh, the other three are actually going to be my halogenyl alkane. So one of them is chlorine, bromine, and the last one is iodine. So Mr. Tim, four solutions. They are colorless. Can you tell me how you want to distinguish them? Well, it's going to be tough because they're all colorless, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to play on this idea that Rx can undergo nucleophilic sub, but halogenyl arenes cannot, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm going to force the Rx molecules to undergo a nucleophilic sub reaction with aqueous NaOH. So the first reaction that we have here, mm -hmm. I'm going to take OH- minus in nucleophile. Mm -hmm. It's going to attack, once again, that electrophilic carbon in your Rx, mm -hmm. breaks off that CX bond, and it releases off that X minus. Now, oh, this X minus, then there's no observation, what? Don't interrupt me, Mr. Leong. I'm not done yet. Don't interrupt me. Okay. okay. So, if you do the same thing for halogenyl arenes, you won't see an X minus, right? But we can't stop there, like what Mr. Leong said. X minus is colorless, okay? So, I'm going to be a bit smarter. I'm going to play with the idea that X minus, because it's colorless, I'm going to precipitate it out by using silver nitrate, okay? So, I'm going to do a, do a third step, or second step, excuse me. I'm going to add in silver nitrate, Ag+, and it's going to react with your X- minus to form a precipitate. Now, if X is chlorine, you're going to get a white PPT, right? If X is Br, you're going to get cream PPT, and if X is I, you're going to get yellow PPT. But do you think we see a PPT for halogenyl arenes, Mr. Liu? Uh, unfortunately, no. I believe it's because they don't undergo nucleophilic sub, as you explained earlier, right? Exactly. So no halides released. Yes. Okay. So I think there's going to be a problem over here. So imagine this with me. Yeah? Uh, the first reaction that you do, right, the first step that you do is you heat it with excess NaOH to induce the nucleophilic sub. Okay. But the fact that it's excess, right, means that it's going to be present uh, after the reaction is done. Right. Now, you went to go right. and add in Ag plus over here, right? <sighs> So what's going to happen is I'm going to tell you that the Ag+, plus, being a cation, is going to react with OH- minus to give me a precipitate which is white colour. Oh. Now this thing very quickly oxidizes to give me a black precipitate and the black colour is so intense, I believe it's going to interfere with all your these mild colours over here. Oh no, yes. So can you tell me a way to combat that, Mr. Chen? Well, if I don't want an Ag+, plus to react with my OH-, minus, then I need to find a way to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Now we know from Sac 3 and Sac 4 that H plus reacts with OH minus. So to remove that excess hydroxide ions, I'm going to add in an acid. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why we add in dilute nitric acid in mm -hmm. step two. All right. Okay. That's great. So let me summarize this for you. So in general, you say that, okay, depending on what is the color of the precipitate, uh, you'll be able to tell that it must be a chloral, sorry, a halogenyl alkene. Uh, and the colour of the precipitate will tell me the identity of the halogen present in the uh, uh, halogenyl alkane. Right. In the event that you don't get any precipitate, then we can safely conclude it must be a uh, halogenyl arene. Yes. Is that right? Exactly. Now, under this particular column over here, there's this additional observation, mm -hmm. right? It tells me the speed of the reaction. Uh, the one with iodine is going to be the fastest, uh, all the way down to chlorine is going to be the slowest. And of course, the person that is a chlorobenzene will definitely not get any precipitate. Oh, wow. So what is the reason why there is a difference in the speed? So we have to go back to the next page, and we're going to take a look at the idea of the bond strength of CX. Now, this is a chemical reaction. So in terms of bond breaking, we are not breaking the IMF, we are actually breaking the covalent bond. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Tim, can you remind me again, in terms of covalent bond strength, what is the first most important factor that affects this, this kind of bond strength? Well, we need to look at the size of the molecules. In other mm -hmm. words, we have to look at the orbital overlap. The mm -hmm. fatter the orbitals are, mm -hmm. then the extent of the orbital overlap becomes poorer, becomes smaller, mm -hmm. and the bond becomes weaker, right? Okay. Yeah. So to make it a bit more precise, Mr. Tim, I think not about the molecules, but about okay. the atoms. Right. Uh, we say that if F is the smallest, the orbital overlap is going to be the best, yep. and as a result, the bond strength is going to be the strongest. Yep. That actually means that the reaction, practically, it doesn't really, really happen. But as you go down group 17, you notice that the atoms become bigger and bigger, and as a result, the bond length becomes uh, longer, making the bond strength weaker. And of course, they will correspond to a faster reaction rate. Yep. Right? 
Okay, now guys, but there is a huge misconception going around in J2 and most students at the J2 level, they'll tell me this. But they'll tell me this, CH3F, because fluorine is so ridiculously electronegative, it pulls electrons away from the carbon and makes the carbon super delta plus. So in that case, doesn't the OH minus nuclear file, doesn't it attack it a lot faster? No, but that's not true. Now you guys need to remember, if you look at the mechanism and stay true to it, it is the bond that is breaking at the end. Okay, so I don't care how electrophilic your carbon is. At the end of the day, because the CF bond is so ridiculously strong, mm -hmm. this mechanism will not take place. Okay, so always remember, bond trend comes first. All right? All right, so that's it that we have for halogen arenes. We will see you guys next week. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>